you under the feet of the Lord Jesus. I declare liberty in the atmosphere. And I ask, oh God, that there will be the free move of the Spirit in this atmosphere. Thank you, Father, that you will visit every home, every person connected on this call. And Jesus Christ will be glorified. For in Jesus' precious and matchless name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Guys, once again, you are welcome. I'm going to move fairly fast. I'm going to try to move fairly fast. I want to thank Minister Tosin for the powerful um, teaching that he gave us. I miss Lesehor's um, teaching. I'm sure it was powerful as well. If you can, try to log on to YouTube when they are posted to listen to these teachings again. We pick certain topics because it is the emphasis of the Spirit. The emphasis. We are on YouTube, by the way. We're on YouTube. Anybody can make sure that my audio is fine on YouTube. And um, that um, um, we are good to go. No, There's no problem on YouTube. Certain topics are the emphasis of the Spirit for the season. Yeah, yeah, it's the emphasis. When you pick, or you see us pick a topic like this, the move of the Spirit, it's indicative that there is something very significant that God wants to do. There is an understanding that He wants to bring us into as His people. Understanding. There are terminologies that we hear, and we always hear in church and in the course of our everyday lives as Christians. But it is not understood. It is not understood. And that's why we would pick a topic like this. If you are on this call, I want you to pay attention from the depths of your heart. So that you would understand what is being communicated. You have to understand what is being communicated. It changes who you are. Listen, we have to leave this mentality that it is prayer, prayer, prayer all the time. Certain things can't be delivered except you understand the word of God. You understand what God is doing. There's a balance. We will give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. I like how a preacher put it. They are the two wings of an airplane that make the airplane fly. If you focus on prayer only, you have one wing on your plane. But when you have two wings, prayer and the word, then your airplane can fly, can take off. It can gain ascendancy in the spirit. Very important what I'm saying. And we have grown a crop of Christians that just want to pray and bind the devil. There is very little understanding of the word of God. Of the things of God, the ways of God, the will of God, the process of God. The emphasis of God in a season, in a generation, in a particular time. If you miss the emphasis of the Spirit for your life, oh, there is nothing really significant that you would hold on to. There's nothing significant. What is the move of the Spirit? What is the move of the Spirit? The first thing you must understand is that the move of the spirit is what sparks revival in a generation it is the move of the spirit it is what brings about revival the move of the spirit is indicative that god is interested in redeeming a generation a redeeming a people, in redeeming a family, in redeeming a tribe, in redeeming a country, in redeeming the people. 
when the spirit of God begins to move it's because something has happened in the heavens a time has come for the spirit of God to visit a people to visit a people I want you to understand what I'm saying. And there are things that begin to happen that 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 show us that the spirit of God is ready to move. Oh. Yeah. And this can happen in the context of your family, in your personal life. It can happen in your ministry, it can happen in your business it can happen in your tribe it can happen in your country it can happen to a generation for you listening to me today the move of the spirit is the marker to the ignition of your marketplace ministry the marker it is the marker If you are not sensitive to know the move of the spirit oh you wouldn't know that your marketplace ministry has started the resources available to you for your marketplace ministry to begin to progress to be fueled by the spirit of god they will be packed by you knowingly or unknowingly and many people have been chasing money, chasing money, as opposed to responding to the move of the Spirit. Give me scripture, 2 Peter 1, verse 19 to 21. This is where we are taking our key emphasis from. The move. The move of the Spirit of God. The move of the Spirit of God. When you hear us say the move of the Spirit, what we are saying is the move of the Holy Spirit. The move of the Holy Spirit. I need my scriptures. Second Peter 1, verse 19 to 21. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scriptures are coming up. The move of the spirit. Yeah. The Bible says here, give it to me, New King James, not King James. New King James. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed. As a light that shines in a dark place and you heed this prophetic word until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart yeah. yeah the morning star can rise in a person's heart knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation for prophecy never came by the will of man but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation why are you saying this Peter? he says that prophecy never came by the will of man listen listen to me when we talk about the move of the spirit it is clear that will of man always tries to interfere with the move of the spirit 
the will of man the agenda of man that's what that word stands for the will of man the agenda of man men have an agenda in case you watch cnn they have an agenda in case you watch fox news they have an agenda it's called the will of man the will of man is related to the will of the founding person there are there are two things that run opposite each other contrary to each other there is the will of man and then there is the will of god but the issue is that if if men begin to run based on their will based on their agenda and they neglect the will of god they frustrate the move of the spirit we would not have the move of the spirit the move of the spirit will become a far-fetched concept and what will begin to happen is many churches the house of god that was supposed to be a place where he moves freely it will be it to be relegated to a place where it becomes tradition because of the agenda of man then things that we begin to do will be based on tradition it will not be based on the will of the spirit The spirit of God moves when he finds expression. If it doesn't find expression in your marriage, you will just move out. If it doesn't find expression in your family, you will move out. If it doesn't find expression with a man, you you would stifle, you would stifle the move of the spirit. as opposed to it spreading like wildfire to china it will stop in a particular country it will stop until man begins to align until god finds a man that has aligned with his will and that man can pack his or agenda oh my god because men do have an agenda believe you me men have an agenda so peter is saying prophecy never came it can never come by the will of man listen you cannot make a man bring about a prophetic word for you even if you want him to if that man is truly in tune with god he would say what god is saying and he will stop speaking yeah he will He would say what God shows him, then he will stop speaking. He would do what God is doing, then he will stop speaking. He said, "But holy men of God spoke. They spoke as they were moved by the Spirit of God." So, so the move of the Spirit brings about a speaking, and and these speakings, uh, there is a criteria for a person. for a man or a woman of god to be able to speak they have to be holy the first criteria for the move of the spirit is god is looking for men that have given themselves to holiness they have separated themselves and and they have consecrated themselves and they have marked themselves for holiness when god finds holy men that can align with him what we have done is we have created room for the move of the spirit then you begin to hear the speakings of god then man will begin to express the mind of god then when you hear that man speak it will be clear that this is not a man speaking out of his agenda this is a vessel of god god has found a man god has found a woman that can utter words that person is connected to god When that begins to happen we begin to see the move of the spirit
holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Spirit. So which one came first, the speaking or the moving? The Bible says they spoke as they were moved. The Spirit of God does the moving, I do the speaking. Can somebody say that? The Spirit of God does the moving, I do the speaking. Can I hear a marketplace minister say that? Can I hear somebody say that? The Spirit of God does the moving, I do the speaking. Yeah, 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 this is true. This is true. Holy men of God spoke. They spoke as they were moved. And, and this move, because we don't understand how the Spirit of God moves, many of us don't know when to speak. Sometimes that move can be a small nudge inside of you. Sometimes that, that move can be, it can just be an impression. Sometimes it can be a vision. Some other times it can be a dream. God has already moved. It's time for you to speak because it takes two here to tango. So what's happening in many people's lives is that the move of the spirit is present but they are not speaking and so there is an aspect of sensitivity required oh my god so that you understand that no prophecy never came by the will of man when there is a move of the spirit there is a steering there is a steering you pack your agenda. You begin to do his agenda, his will. This is why we don't have many Christians that can bring the counsel of God to a people, to a generation, to a family. We haven't been taught that there is something called the move of the Spirit. And if you don't know, you don't know. You just, you just be saying, something told me. Yeah, you'll be saying you'll be hearing words like that. Something told me. Something told me. The second the spirit moves, he has given you liberty to speak. But the will of man, the agenda of man is is not mixed in with the will of the spirit, the agenda of the spirit. If you do that, what you will arrive at is what we call denominations in Christianity. We have so many variations of Christianity. Some believe this, some believe that. Others don't believe this. We even have churches that don't believe that the, the, the spirit can move again and, and, and do healing. Or they, 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 they. You know, a, a friend of ours who went, who went to Boston the other day to minister. And, and he was telling us when we were being hosted for dinner at his house. It was in, it was in a church. They gave him time to preach. And he preached. And then he, he began to move in the prophetic. And, and, and go by word of knowledge and when he was done the pastor called him into his office and gave him a stern warning never do this again ever again when it's time for the word all we do is preach the word we don't have time for the move of the spirit we don't have time for that we, 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 we are orderly here I don't want to go into what's happening in the body of Christ these days. 
But it is heartbreaking to see that the will of man keeps competing with the will of God. And God is very gentle. The second he sees that, he backs away. Then when you don't have a move of the Spirit, there will be a prolonged time whereby nothing is happening. It will be as though God has forgotten his people. And then we begin to cry again for revival. Then the Spirit says that we are thirsting for him. That we are hungry for him. And he begins to look for holy men, holy men, men that give themselves to holiness. Men that can align with him because they have separated themselves to God. And, and when he finds them, he begins to move again to them. Listen to me. The reason why we have so few revivalists in the world is because the will of man is competing with the will of God. When you have that you will strangle the move of the spirit and, and and the sad part is that your family that should have benefited from it your generation that should have benefited from it they won't benefit from it let me show you what the spirit of God begins to do when he begins to move Genesis 1 Give me that scripture. Genesis 1. Genesis 1. If you know somebody who is hungry for God, somebody who wants to go further in their Christian walk, I'm under instruction by the Spirit of God that you share the link, either the YouTube link or the Teams link with them. It's time for us to help Christians understand what they are doing right, what they are doing wrong. What does God begin to do when he finds holy men? When they are moved by the Spirit and those men speak? The Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth, this earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And so the evening and the morning were the first day. When God finds holy men. Men that have separated themselves to him. They began the pursuit of holiness. And, and he moves. I hope you know the earth here is not just the physical earth. The earth, earthen vessels, human beings are earthen vessels. When you feel that steering, what he wants to do is to bring about light, 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 light. That the people who sat in darkness, that they can begin to see a great light. That's what God begins to do. The people who sat in darkness. Those people have seen a great light. And to those who sat in the valley of the shadow of death, light has dawned. So he, he, through the prophetic word that he brings through you, he brings about light to a people. He brings about light to a family, to a man, to a woman, light to a generation. He pulls them out of darkness. He calls them into his marvelous light. The move of the spirit is always it is always marked by light and and you can you can interpret that light to mean revelation knowledge so there will be an explosion of revelation of god it's time you see a revival coming 
a revival brewing up, a revival present, you can be sure there will be the explosion of light. It will be a feast of light. People's hungry, thirsty, and, and, and drained spirits, they will begin to receive light. They will begin to receive light, the light of God. Those that look like they have Kwashioko in the spirit, oh my God, they will be fed. They will be fed. They will be fed a diet called light. They will be fed. And that's why you can't afford to not speak when the spirit moves you. Look at what my brother Tosin was saying. The guy in the office that he, he met. And he gave him a plate of food. And something, something was stirred up in the guy. And when he called him, the guy began to say what he was experiencing. Sensitivity to the move of the spirit. It's a, it will be as though you've broken a coconut. And, and on the inside, there is so much light trapped inside of it. And you've broken that thing open. The move of the spirit. The move of the spirit. God created the heavens and the earth. There are so many earthen vessels that are without form and void. And darkness is on the face of their deep soul. It takes the spirit of God hovering. Oh, he's hovering. He's, he's looking for aligned men. Men that have aligned with holiness that have aligned with his agenda, his will. Men that will pack their will and, and take up his will. And, and when he finds those men, then he speaks through them. Let there be light. And there was light. Then you can, you can give a person, you can turn them to righteousness. You can, you can speak the words of God, the counsel of God, the mind of God to them. You can, you can, you can, you can paint a picture of their future the plans that God has for them that are good and not of evil, you can, you can, you can impress that on their soul. But it takes men that have given themselves to holiness. And you know, we 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 tried in a, in a particular denomination in Nigeria, we tried to interpret that as women not wearing uh, uh, trousers or pants, uh, not wearing here earrings and. And you know, all of those other kind of things. It was all an effort to move towards holiness, to get people's mind to move towards holiness. But Jesus said, it is not what a person takes in that defiles them, it is what comes out of them. It's not what you wear per se that defiles you. It's what comes out of you. This is what stifles the move of the Spirit of God. Moved here, by the way, means to shake or hover over. To hover. You see, as I'm speaking now, there is a hovering. The Spirit of God is at liberty through my vessel. And anybody under the influence of my voice listening to me, there will be a hovering. You'll be hearing different things. I'll be saying one thing, but you'll be hearing something else. It's the move of the Spirit. He takes that person's alignment and he begins to communicate his will to that person. See, my wife has a very, very animated man. So something happens whenever I'm teaching, especially if I'm ministering physically. I'll be teaching one thing, but the Spirit of God will take what I'm teaching and he'll begin to explain it to her in different dimensions. Then she will, she will begin to explain what she got and what 
and it will be like a, a totally new message from what I thought. It's the, it's the move of the Spirit that does that. One person is saying one thing, but then he takes that thing and he begins to explain his will to that person. The earth was without form. The earth was without void. Listen, the reason why we need the move of the Spirit badly, badly, very badly in this generation, there are many people around you that that's what they look like in the Spirit. Their earthen vessel is without form. It looks void and there is darkness on the face of their deep soul. Please, if you're unmuted, kindly stay muted. And you stay muted. But when God finds a man or a woman that's aligned with him, with his will, with his agenda, oh, there is a free move. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. There's liberty. There's liberty. So the first thing we need is giving of ourselves to holiness alignment with god by means of holiness yeah and that begins to prompt the move of the spirit he finds an aligned man an aligned woman then he begins to speak and when he begins to speak light breaks forth light breaks out light the knowledge of god the prophetic for a person will break out heaven's purpose and intent for your life is awake yeah it will be revealed it will be revealed because god is moving the darkness that's upon that person's soul will be taken up and lifted because light extinguishes darkness where there is light, darkness goes into hiding. It's hide. But there is something else that we need. Acts 2, verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter number 2, verse 1 to 4. The Bible says in that scripture, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in with one accord in one place. Can somebody say unity? Can somebody say unity? They were all with one accord in one place. Can I hear that word, unity? Let me hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unity. 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 So we have holiness. Holiness is the prerequisite. When you have holy men gathering and they are in unity, Oh, what you're going to begin to see is a powerful move, a powerful move of the Spirit. Unity. But what were they doing there in the first place? Can anybody answer me? The Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. What were they doing there? Praying and tarrying. Yeah. That's it. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem. Until. So they were there tarrying and praying and just waiting on God. That's another thing that you must have. To see and experience the move of the Spirit. The patience to wait on God. To tarry. To tarry in God's presence. A fervent prayer life to so when you see holy men that are dwelling together in unity and they are praying or they are tarrying and waiting on God get ready for an explosion get ready get ready get ready the Bible says suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Listen, listen to me. 
each time I think of Remnant Christian Network, I see the portrait of what is being implied in scriptures here. God found men that were willing to give themselves to holiness. They separated themselves in a small city called Makadu, Benue State in Nigeria. I'm just giving you an example so that I don't think it's only in scripture that this is found. These men gave themselves to holiness. They were separated. They were living a consecrated life many years ago before you got to know about them. And they were in one accord in a small tent praying. Each time you have that, you are getting ready for what I call a global move of the spirit. Something that would affect the foundations of the earth. Because the move of the spirit is in different levels. There is the individualistic aspect of it. But then there is the global aspect of it. There is that part. I'm looking for a word. Um, should I call it congregational or no, 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 that's not the appropriate word. There is the, um, the general aspect, the corporate, thank you, thank you. The corporate aspect of it. And then there is the individual aspect of it. It's one thing to know when the spirit of God has moved within you so that you can speak. But it's something else to, to, to see it in a corporate setting where there are men and women aligned to God's will and purpose. All they want to do is download heaven and earth. And they are waiting on God. They are waiting on God. They are praying, they are fasting. They are consecrated. And they are in one accord. They are in one accord. They are in one accord. Oh, get ready for a rushing mighty wind to invade that place. And what that wind will do is to begin to spread that move. Because Jesus said the wind comes and goes. You know not where it comes from. That's how men that are given to the Spirit, that's what they look like. So that wind will, it will, it will carry that move. That move will be transported. It will be taken out of the context of their little location. It will begin to spread like wildfire. Listen to me. The Bible says, it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. If you want to experience the move of the Spirit, you have to be filled with the Spirit. It's not for those that don't have the Holy Spirit. That's the sad truth. That's the sad truth. So I've shown you the prerequisites to experience the move of the Spirit. Holiness is number one. Unity is number two. Tarrying and praying and waiting on God is number three. But all of that, first of all, you are filled with the Spirit. Then He gives you utterance. You will now be able to perceive when He moves within you. When He moves in the corporate setting, and there will be something called utterance. Utterance gives us the evidence that the Spirit of God is, is moving. Yeah, yeah, it's to come with utterance. Listen to me. Give me, if you have it open, Matthew 16, verse 18. If you don't have it open, don't worry about it. In that scripture, Jesus says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. I will build my church.
That word church is ecclesia. E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A. And that word means called out or called forth. I will build my ecclesia. Those who are called out, who are called forth out of darkness into my marvelous light, I will build them. The church itself was founded on the teachings of Jesus. Let me let me give you a small history lesson so that you understand how the will of man competes with the will of God. Because that is the main reason why we have a very limited people experience in the move of the Spirit. The church itself was founded on the teachings of Jesus Christ. But it, it, it began to spread throughout the Roman Empire. And, and, and it went beyond that empire. It began to gain major establishments. First of all, in places like Jerusalem and Antioch. That's where we see where everything happened, Pentecost and all of that. But when that happened, they were under Roman government. They were under Roman government. And, and, and those Christians that were converted, they refused to sacrifice to Roman deities. They refused to sacrifice to the, the, the deities of the day, those, those smaller gods. And, and they, were, they were staunch Christians. They, they chose the will of God. They, they did not believe in any other God except through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what they were believing in. And they, they were ready to die for their faith. So those Roman folks began to persecute them. The church, after a lot of persecution, was soon legalized in the Roman Empire. And then it was promoted by Emperor Constantine in the fourth century as the state church of the Roman Empire. One writer says that the blood of all the martyrs became the seed in the ground for Christianity to become the, the, the church of the Roman Empire. I'm going somewhere. But a time period came called the Dark Ages. Persecution started from very early, very early. Soon after Jesus Christ died, you know the story. Paul that was first of all called Saul went about killing Christians around the whole place. He got led us to do that. But a time came called the Dark Ages. And, and history says that it was a, a period of time that the Roman Empire fell in 476 CE and it, it marked the beginning of the Protestant Reformation in 1570. So, so the Dark Ages for the Catholic Church is considered to have been the period between 590 CE to 1517 CE. But eventually we now began to see the move of the Spirit again. When we say it was the Dark Ages, it was dark it was dark it was dark but the catholic church began to gain so much ground and and soon after that we began to see the move of the spirit again we went from the catholic church to what we call the protestant reformation and that began in 1517 and, and that was when the number of christian denominations began to grow the, the will of man was mingled with the will of the Spirit. Because the Bible is the same, it is clear. What is documented is clear. So how come we are having variations? What happened? Some believe in speaking in tongues, some don't. What happened exactly? But there was something called the Protestant Reformation. And that reformation led to the emergence of the Lutheran, the Anglican, the Presbyterian, the Baptist, and some other denominations. The Catholic Church responded to the reformation 
by sending missionaries to Asia, to Africa, to Latin America, and by waging war in France, Netherlands, and Germany. They were trying to suppress it. But when the Spirit of God begins to find men that give themselves to it, anything you do to try to suppress that move, you will be adding kerosene, you'll be adding fuel, gasoline to fire. Yeah, it's the move of the Spirit. You can't quench it. It's not the will of man. The will of man can be quenched. You know, you've seen some of those African movies whereby <laughs> maybe the guy wants to marry a girl and the girl comes from a very wealthy family. Then the father of the girl will now call the man and pay him and say, listen, I'll give you maybe a million dollars to <laughs> to leave my wife or to leave my daughter rather and just go. Just I'll, I'll buy you. That's the will of man. A man can be purchased. The will of man can, yeah, yeah. But when it comes to the will of God, there's nothing you can do about it. But anyways, we now had the Anglican Church, which was initially founded in 1534 by King Henry um, VIII, something like that, through his act of supremacy. But it was formally established as the Anglican Commune in 1867. You have to understand the history to understand where we are going. Then, then we had something called the Methodist Church. And that church dates back to 1730 when John and Charles Wesley, two students at Oxford University in England, gathered a small group of students who sought to spread that movement. But it was officially named the United Methodist Church in April 23rd, 1968. We had the Baptist Church movement. The first Baptist churches were formed by English speakers in Holland between 1609 and 1612. They believed that a fellow believer could read and interpret the Bible on their own, just as Martin Luther believed. And in America, a man called Roger Williams established the first Baptist church in 1638 in Providence, Rhode Island. Then, then we had something called the Presbyterian Church. And they traced their history to the 16th century and to the Protestant Reformation. In a wide sense, Presbyterianism is the system of church government by representative assemblies called presbyteries, and they oppose government by bishops or government by congregation. So we had all these different movements springing up. God was trying to bring a move that was consistent with what was documented in Scripture. And what would happen is that he would find men and women that align with him through holiness and consecration and begin to impart in their mind his will. But when they bring it up to their people, then there is corruption in there. There is, there is something that begins to happen. It will create a deviation. To create a deviation. You will now have denominations springing forth. But the word of God is true. It is one word. You, you, you cannot... Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Give me John 3 verse 8. John 3 verse 8. I had a chance to um, go to a Catholic church many, many years ago. I was dating somebody that was Catholic. And so they invited me to their church. And I sat down and I observed the order and how pious and sanctimonious everybody looked. And I was wondering why my church was so different. And it seems like these churches that have organized um, order and, and they've put their the system in place that's the word system not order system because God is the God of order but they put systems in place 
and those systems don't make room for the move of the spirit at all none of the none of that is allowed nobody can have a prophetic word they sing their hymns they count their rosary and and they believe that everything is okay but like paul said whether christ is preached out of envy and spite or whether he's preached out of goodwill we just joy that christ is preached but if i must be honest with you my friends that is not the character and the nature of the spirit of god it's not it's not look at what the scripture says the wind the wind here is is character characterized it, it, it's used to depict the, the the holy spirit he can act like wind there came a mighty rushing wind in that room so we we we, we, we know him we understand his movement like how we can look at the wind and jesus christ is saying something very important the wind blows where it wishes that depicts this the will of god not the will of man it's where it wishes not where man wants it to blow the wind blows where it wishes all you do is you hear the sound of it you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes is everybody born of the spirit yeah so is everybody born when we when we begin to have systems in churches you take away the activity of the It can no longer blow where it wishes. It is now man that begins to blow their trumpet. It is now man that begins to blow or build huge cathedrals. But those cathedrals are void of the move of the spirit. And those cathedrals will suffer a fate that is inevitable. A time will come and a day will come that they will be void and empty. You know why? The spirit was not given a chance. So what they built was just human institutions. So is everybody born of the spirit. You have to be malleable in his hands. You want to experience the move of the spirit within, you have to be malleable. Yeah. Spontaneous. He can tell you now, 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 I want you to pack what you're doing, join this meeting and begin to teach. He can tell you, oh, what I want you to do now is to call Madame Ugochi and just speak to her for 30 minutes. If you don't have the, the flexibility in his hands, you yourself, by your will, by your agenda, you have stifled the move of the spirit. You've stifled it. And when the Spirit of God sees men that have their own will and agenda, oh, he, he, he you, you, you know, no, no. What we do be void, void of what he's doing. There will be no revival anywhere. People will go on in darkness. The earthen vessels around you, they will remain void and empty, without form darkness will be on the on on the face of their soul oh oh my god listen to me let me tell you something <laughs> i one day i took my mom to to a church when my mom comes to my house she doesn't believe that we can have church in our house where two or three agada is not enough so we have to go to a physical church so the last time I took her to this church, very close to my house, 
and we sat down there and um, the pastor got on the stage and this pastor began to crack jokes half of his someone that was less than 30 minutes was cracking jokes it was an all Caucasian population and 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 there were very few you know Africans or African American in the, in the crowd but I looked around and I realized that they were laughing at the jokes he was cracking but there was nothing from the spirit being imparted all of a sudden I felt virtue leaving me yeah people that were hungry around me they began to tap for me I'm telling you the truth because their spirit is so lean and so dry nobody dares carrying the spirit of God in a measure there is no move of the spirit so when a person that carries that grace enters that place they will begin to draw from him oh yeah they'll begin to draw and if you are if you are sensitive you will feel virtue leaving you you just feel virtue leaving you there are so many hungry people you look like the only person that can see in the entire place you are the person carrying a tray of food and everybody is starved in the spirit they look beggarly they look poor blind they look lean they look like they are beggars in the spirit and we are we have a man up there and what he's doing is that he's cracking jokes instead of feeding their spirits he's cracking jokes so you have them all they can do is is, is, is go see therapists because their soul is, is is full of darkness the darkness has hovered over that soul and and it will result in anxiety depression panic attacks all kinds of things oh my god and nobody has aligned enough what we have is a system of order just systems in place a big building void of the spirit of god so we and we got out there sunday morning week in week out nobody's life is being changed all we like to do is to come together because we are a community oh my god when would you align enough for the spirit of god to have a man where he can he can use he can blow somewhere he can blow to the north blow to the east blow to the west i remember i was in argentina for my retreat this time last year i had rented a car i was going to explore the entire place because that's how i relax when i travel i love to just rent a car and just drive around and and i can even pray while i'm doing that and the car cost me a lot of money it was expensive it wasn't cheap i had rented a, a, a high-rise in the center of of, of, the, of the downtown area in the city and I, I i i got there was raining so heavily finally parked the car in the garage went upstairs to wherever i was staying and i just heard the spirit of god says very good now you are here you're not going to go out you're going to spend time in here for the next few days that you are here yeah yeah that car that you rented you won't use it you use it to get from the airport to your apartment i said eh? he said yes thankfully i had a high rise that the the the, the, the glass it was just glass on the on the on the wall so i could see through the city he said that's enough for you to see the city if that's what your plan was you can see it from looking <laughs> looking through the glass so i did that the car that I had paid, I think it was about 400 and something dollars for, for five days, something like that. That money just was like, just wasted. And then the day before I was meant to leave, he, he tells me, he says, get up now, change your flight, leave for, for back to Charlotte today. Yeah, yeah, he says, start flying back today. I said, Lord, the flight is tomorrow now. I can just wait. He said, leave now. Leave now. I obey. Are you malleable in his hands? Can he command you? Because the wind blows where it wishes. 
you hear the sound of it you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes so is everybody born of the spirit i remember i i, I texted my i said i'm coming back home today today i'm at the airport already she said ah, what's chasing you from the place <laughs> it's the wind of the spirit our job as revivalists as marketplace ministers is to align with the will the will the will of the spirit of god the will is what brings about the move of the spirit When Apostle Larry Mess, he says something like, he says that the power of God flows in the direction of the will of God. But, but, but you won't understand, you know, what he's saying. But it's very true. God's power flows in the direction of his will. If you want to be a powerful man or woman, you would have to be a person that is used to aligning with the will of God. He, he will order you about like the wind. Yeah, that's what he does. We don't control where he blows. And we don't control when he blows. But when the Spirit of God begins to move, our response should be to align with him. Can I hear somebody say that? Our response should be to align with can I hear somebody say that? I want to hear somebody say that. Um, our response should be to align with him. The rest of is to align. It's not time for you to get creative and put your agenda and mix it so that you now create your own denomination. No. That's what has birthed thousands of, of, of different variations of Christianity. Do you know that Muslims look more united than us? I think there are, there are less than 12 versions of Islam. But Christianity has over a thousand versions. Yeah, yeah, they do. We do, rather. It is men mixing their agenda. They mix it. It's like you're, you're cooking a pot of and then you mix your own thing inside it. I remember I wanted to impress my wife one day. And then I, I, I was going to make stew. Instead of her cooking, I wanted to make soup. I think she was pregnant then. And, and, and a silly idea came into my mind. You know, you know, we men, God will help us. I went to go and get sweet corn. And I poured, <laughs> I poured sweet corn in the soup, thinking it will impress her. I, I wanted to put my own thing. The way soup is made is, it, you cannot put corn inside soup, inside stew. The human was like, what is this? What are you doing? Yeah, that's what people look like. When you mix your agenda, your agenda with God's agenda. You go and put an ingredient, not necessary at all. Then you create a new denomination, a new variation of Christianity. And the move of the Spirit ends there with you. Listen to me. The move of the Spirit can be in the wilderness yeah yeah that's what we saw with john the baptist it will not be a fancy cathedral you know i've got a friend in atl who chooses a church based on how nice the church is you know why because he wants to go and network there he's in real estate so he wants to go and network <laughs> so what he does is he looks at how big the building is then he joins the church and he begins to do no no, no listen it can be found in the wilderness in the wilderness It can be in a manger, not in a fancy hospital. The present move of God can be in a manger where there are donkeys and cattle. And the place looks despised. You won't think anything can come out of Nazareth. Oh my God. It can be in an upper room. How they were praying in Acts number two. That's what we saw in our CN prayer tent in Makodi. When my wife and I went to that prayer tent, we were shocked that this is where everything started from. A very small place. Very small space. And now, it, it's in Europe. It's in America. It's spreading around Nigeria like wildfire. Around Africa like wildfire. 
but where he came from was a very small place a very small place that tent listen you need to go there you would understand that the move of the spirit can spread like wildfire and if you if you're looking for structure and, and and you miss it oh then what would happen is that darkness will remain on the on the soul of that person darkness it will cover the face of their deep soul you know a man's soul is very deep i remember i i, I used to daydream about being in singapore i went to singapore in my mind first i went to singapore in my dreams my literal dreams not just daydreams before i actually physically went to singapore a, a man's soul can be very deep if you don't have god to, to mend that soul to patch it to infuse light to obliterate darkness in your soul it will begin to wander and keep wandering there will be no guardrails around your soul that's the danger the move of the spirit can be in a village it can be in the farthest parts of the north in a country like nigeria it can start from a remote village in uganda oh my god let me say this the move of the spirit can start with a woman a woman that everybody despises you know sometimes i look at the kind of comments that we get on on youtube on some of our youtube videos <laughs> then one day one silly guy wrote women should not be allowed to preach on my wife's video of course i, I deleted it but we just began to laugh like what's wrong with this person it's that kind of mindset that limits the move of the spirit. Women should keep quiet in church and should sit down. Not knowing that Paul was writing in a particular context, in a culture. The wind blows where it's wishing. That includes male or female. The wind blows where it wishes. That includes children. Oh, yeah. Listen to me. The move of the spirit is not always characterized by a crowd, a large crowd. Much rather, it is characterized by the release of light of God's word. The entrance of your word brings light. That is the character of the move of the spirit. It's not by you doing signs and wonders like TB Joshua. It is by the word of God. If we are seeing signs and wonders and we don't see the word of God, the explosion of light, you are not pioneering the move of the spirit. I'm sorry, you're not. That is the evidence because it's when the spirit of God moved, they said, let there be light. Let there be light. If you raise a people based on miracles, signs and wonders, without teaching them the truth, without infusing their spirit with light, you would have raised babies and midgets in the spirit. You would have raised babies. The move of the spirit. It can be online. Such as the tribe of marketplace minister or any other online ministry that you join. Yeah, it can be online. They may not even have a building to call their own. It can be it can be through a worshiper like Theophilus Sunday. It can be in music. It's the move of the spirit. And when you hear it, you will know that this one is different. This is a sound from heaven. There is something infused in this sound that brings solace to my soul. It brings peace. It ministers life to me. It's the move of the spirit because it's characterized by light and that light brings life. But one thing is for sure, whenever there is 
elegit move of the spirit men begin to find their way there sinners and godly people alike This light will be shining and, and darkness will not be able to cover it. The Bible says the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. It cannot snuff out the light out of that light. Yeah, it won't be able to stifle it. If God finds the right people. Most times, the move of the Spirit starts with one man. Can anybody say that? Most times, it starts with one man. Can I hear you guys here? Most times, Most times it's not with one man. It's just with one man. Yeah. And that man finds other faithful men. Then they begin to pray. They begin to tarry. They begin to wait on God. To download God's agenda for a season. To download God's agenda for a family. God's agenda for a people. When, when it was time for us to inaugurate King's Arrow, you know what my wife received? Women arising in righteousness and power. That represents God's agenda through a man, through a woman rather. It starts with one person. But then, then, then that light will begin to shine and it will begin to draw other people. And if they are faithful men, and they are in unity, they agree, they understand their agenda. And they are tarrying and waiting on God. It will become a corporate move of the Spirit. Unity is what we lack in many of our small, small ministries like online or even on ground. Unity. People just gather there because it's time for church. We don't share the same agenda. What one person has downloaded from heaven, how we can make that burden our body. And so we don't see it become a corporate move. We don't see it become a corporate move. Sometimes God sends a deliverer like Moses. And that man begins through alignment to move with the spirit in eff an effort to guide those people to deliver those people that's what he does but first God finds a man that man can be you it can be you 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 don't look too far don't look at that big man of God can somebody say I am that man in my family can somebody say that I am that man I am, I am that man in woman. my family I am that man and I want my woman to say I am that woman in my family. I want my women to say that. I am that woman in my family. I am that woman in my family. It's you. Who told you you must wait for a man? It's you. It's you. If you align with God and you give yourself to holiness, you'll be surprised. How the prophetic word of God for that family will be coming through you. You're surprised. Believe in his prophet, so shall you be established. People will have to consult you when major decisions are meant to be held in the family. You know why? They have found that there is a move of the spirit with you. There is a move of the spirit. And the brighter your light shines, the more families it will cover, it will cover more. All the way to the east, wise men came for Jesus. They realized that there was a move of the spirits in a manger in Bethlehem of Judea. And they began to navigate their way following that star. Oh, you don't know that you are a star. That's why you've not given yourself to the pathway of holiness. Give me Exodus 13. Let's look at how God sends a deliverer. And we begin to see the move of the Spirit in that scripture. Exodus 13. From verse 19 to 21. I wish we could move fast. 
The Bible says Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had placed the children of Israel under solemn oath. What did he say to them? God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. I don't want to go into that issue of the bones, but let's, let's, that's not my emphasis. The Bible says, so they took their journey from Sukkot, and they camped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night listen to me the pillar of cloud here signifies the Holy Spirit the pillar of fire that gave light signified the word of God because Psalm 119 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. But how do we know that the cloud signified the move of the Holy Spirit? Give me 1 Corinthians 10. I'll, I'll come back to the scripture. But give me 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1 to 4. The pillar of cloud there was the, the, the move of the Holy Spirit. And I want to show it to you in scripture. The Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. We are seeing certain terminologies that are very strange, very strange rather. They were baptized into Moses in the cloud. They were baptized into Moses in the sea. What does that mean? All ate the same spiritual food. All drank the same spiritual drink. But they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. It is from that scripture that we see that the move of the Spirit can follow a man. It can follow a man. Go back to that scripture. Exodus 13. Go back to Exodus 13. The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lift the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and by night when god brought me to understand the scripture i i began to understand that the the, the, the move of the spirit can be with a man morning or night yeah it can be with a man morning or night the pillar of cloud followed them by day the pillar of fire followed them at night. It went before them. Let me show you something else. Exodus 14, 15 to 20. Exodus 14, 15 to 20. Give me that scripture. I want to show you how the move of the Spirit can become God's protective measure over His children. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But lift up your rod. Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the Israelites shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. And they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh. And over all his army. His chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariot and his husband. And the angel of God, who went before the camp of Israel, moved. And he went behind them. 
and the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and darkness to one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other all that night. If you ever ask the question, how did the Egyptians not come and start killing the Israelites when they were making their journey to out of Egypt and they got to the Red Sea? That is the answer. This pillar of cloud went from before them, it came behind them. It began to protect them. And, and what it did was it made the, the, the place dark for one party. But for the other party, it gave them light. Very interesting. Anytime you see the move of the Spirit of God, it will protect you from the enemy one and it will give light to you. Very important. So what ignites the move of the Spirit? What ignites it? John 1, verse 31 to 33. John 1. Listen to me. In this day and time, a man can never perceive the move of the Spirit unless he or she is baptized into the Spirit. Is baptized. Now look at what this guy says. The prophet John. He says, I did not know him. Talking about Jesus. But that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove. And he remained upon him. I did not know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. This is he. A fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit is the prerequisite if you must see the move of the Spirit in your life. Now let me say this. Once you have that, then there is something called sensitivity. That's how we begin to perceive that move of the Spirit within us. I'm talking now about the individual aspect of the move of the Spirit. How you can bring a prophetic word to your generation, to your family, to your friends. How you can bring light to those who are kept in darkness. The move of the Spirit is internal and also external. It can happen within a man that is baptized with the Holy Spirit because the Spirit of God is inside of that man. So when we say the move of the Spirit, it's not just external. We are talking about being able to perceive the movement of the Spirit of God within your spirit man. If you don't understand this, you will be highly ineffective as a marketplace minister. When it's internal, something is stirred up inside of you. God disrupts your process. But it starts with God finding faithful men that have given themselves to holiness, holiness, holiness. And that begins to bring you to something called death. You would know that the Spirit of God has begun to move in you because He will affect the operations of your life, the things that pertain to you. Sometimes he will bring certain things that you've trusted into a standstill so that you can shift your perspective from the external to the internal to what's happening inside of you. For like me, for instance, he, he brought my business to a halt so that I could lean on him because the move of the Spirit 
it doesn't compete with the flesh so everything you've built on the flesh and with the flesh and through the flesh you begin to shut down the operation the more you give yourself to holiness the more the things that you've leaned on in the flesh in Babylon will begin to die and you will begin to think that something else is happening with you no it's the move of the spirit You are changing your economy from the flesh to the spirit. God has begun to move within you. To test your heart. To see if you are malleable in his hands like the wind. So that he can order you here and there. So that he can take hold of your time. And begin to, 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 to teach you more of himself. Oh my God. To begin to de demand more time in prayer with you. He will offer you more consecration. When you begin to see these signs happening in your life, God has begun to move within you. He's begun to move. And if that man or woman is, is willing to give themselves to process, oh, what will break out of you is something powerful. You know why? You've switched to the economy of the spirit. And the spirit cannot be contained. He is spirit. The spirit. There's a difference. There's a difference. He will fill your mouth with words because he has begun to move on your inside. The prophetic will begin to open up to you. Listen, listen. The prophetic is not just for prophets. You can be an evangelist and you can you can have a grace in the prophetic. You know why? Because holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Spirit. He did not say prophets spoke. Holy men of God spoke. So it's first in time. And for you, when he begins to move, there is a walking he does in your heart and with your heart. He will break the fleshly, the, the hard parts of your heart. He will give you a heart of flesh. He will give you a heart that, that can decipher what he's saying. He will give you a heart that can feel compassion. You'll begin to feel the passion of the Christ in your heart. You know why? Because the Spirit of God is living inside of you. So he disrupts your process. everything that's happening to you is a kind of sacrifice in your life that you are offering when it begins to bring you consecration you begin to present your body a living sacrifice if you would wield his power and his authority because he has moved it's because you've mastered the voice of god within you you've mastered when the will of god is stirred up within you you know when the move of the spirit has begun within you so from your spirit man he can move into your soul and that soul that that has the components of your emotion the components of your will and your mind he can begin to illuminate them and if you're not sensitive enough you won't know you won't know that he has begun to move Listen to me. Listen to me. When God began to train me to understand the move of the Spirit within me, He gave me a simple instruction. He said, just look in the eye of the person. Look in the eyes of the person. Look straight into the eyes. And then I'll begin to give you impressions. What I'm picking up, what you're picking up will be impressions from me. Yeah. The move of the Spirit is very interesting because what he's doing is that he's bringing light to your walk so that you can release a prophetic word over them. You can pull them out of darkness into God's marvelous light. But it hangs on the basis that you've given yourself to a life of holiness. Your mind is sanctified. Your will is sanctified. Your emotions are now sanctified. 
to when he moves into those layers, it won't compete with the flesh because there is something called sanctification. I can shake a person's hand. And if that person begins to, if the person battles with something like pornography or, 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 or something like that, I can begin to have that impression. I can look in a person's eyes and if they are depressed, I can know. Because that feeling will come on me. It, it, it's the move of the spirit. I can, I can look in a person or I can even hear their voice in a conversation and the spirit of God in me is stared off. That's why I know when somebody's speaking the, the, the demonic tongues, I know because the spirit searches all things. He searches all things. If it is true, you carry the spirit of God in a measure. Anything you perceive, he will search it out. He really will. He really will. I was in my Baba shop yesterday. And a man came in with three kids, two boys and a girl. And he was just chatting with my barber and I was sharing what he was saying. The girl was like my daughter's age, but she was five years old. And I looked at her, the little girl, and I began to see what God was doing with this girl. Just by looking. And he began to explain to me what he was going to do with this girl. See, the move of the spirit on your inside can be mastered, can be mastered. It is those that master this move on the inside that do very, very well in the prophetic. But, but because your mind is sanctified, you won't doubt what you are receiving, what you are getting, you won't doubt it. I remember I, I, I brought a man to the office last week to give us a quote. My wife and I were there and I asked my wife, what do you get from this guy? I already knew about him already. And, and she, she picked it up. Alcoholism and drugs. She picked it up right away. That's because the move of the spirit in you can be trusted. It can be trusted. You must know when he moves within you. You must know his operation. You must know. You must know. And there are different operations of the Spirit of God within you. But the second he moves, if you are living a consecrated life and you are sanctified truly, you will be able to perceive his move. And that perception becomes illumination for somebody else. God begins to, to, to tell you what he wants to do with them and through them. If I haven't lost you, let me see a thumbs up. I'm just showing you that the move of the Spirit is first internal. It's first internal. If you must be a marketplace minister to bring life and light wherever you are, you must understand the move of the Spirit. He can go before you, He can follow you as well. When He follows you, He's there to protect you. When He goes before you, He's leading you, and holy men of God will speak as the Spirit gives them a truth. You must understand the dynamics of the move of the Spirit. But when you conceal what is in your mind and you don't speak it out, then you don't give yourself a chance to grow alongside the move of the Spirit. And at that point, what is internal cannot become external within you or outside of you. You know why? You have not brought yourself to a place of maturity where you can wield these powers outside. The Spirit of God can move inside of you at any time. The Bible says you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. 
it's still that same word again knowledge knowledge light bring you to the point of light the inner anointing is what is stirred up inside of you then it begins to illuminate different parts of your life and the more sensitive you are the more effective you become in moving with the spirit the more you can trust that voice so when people say that i'm hearing two different voices or i'm not sure if it's the holy spirit saying this to me let me tell you the truth it is because you have not come to a place where your mind is sanctified enough to trust the voice of god because the bible says he that is joined to the lord is one spirit with him one spirit not one flesh not one soul one spirit you and your wife can be one flesh you and the spirit of god one spirit and the dynamics with your wife shows you that it can be the same thing with the spirit the same thing there is a tie that can happen that makes you one with him and you begin to look more like him on the inside Galatians 5. Give me that scripture. But but when you are going through that process, I want you to know and understand something. God will disrupt your life. It will require you begin to have aspects of the crucified life. Yeah. He will crucify the flesh because the flesh is dealt with through the cross. So you will kill certain things so that you can have more of him. That's the signature that it is God doing it. It is God doing it. If you are still the same person that we know last year, carrying women around the whole place, and you claim you are receiving prophetic words, it is not the move of the spirit. It's something else. Maybe it's the move of alcohol. Oh my God. Look at this scripture. The flesh lost against the spirit. Very strong word the Apostle Paul uses. Lost. Like how a man can lost after a woman. That's the word he used to. The flesh lost against the spirit. And the spirit lost against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But then there is something called the fruit of the Spirit. This is the token that this person, we can trust the move of the Spirit in and through their life. Oh, please, I want you to listen to me very carefully. I'm not joking not right now. If we can't see the fruit of the Spirit in that person's life, in what they are saying, the fruit of the Spirit, you have a right to not believe it from God. It is not the move of the Spirit. If it is the move, you will see the fruit. It is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Listen to me. God sends people for me to cover and to mentor and to watch over them. 
I know when a person is connected to what we are doing here. There are fruits that we would see in their life. And I know when a person that is supposed to be under me is, is drinking from a different stream and that stream is polluted. I know, I can sense when they talk. Yeah. You can only give what you have. So you can tell. And I'll look and I'll say, ah, what is this? Where is this coming from? This is not what God has sent us to do in this commission. You can tell. You can tell. It's like you looking at your children, if they have any semblance of evil. I look at my son, I can see me. I look at my daughter, I can see me. If I don't see any semblance, I have a right to ask my wife where she got them from. That's the same thing that happens in the spirit. <laughs> I, oh my God. Let me know some things. I speak in parables. It is the stream that you drink from that you would bring out. And if that stream is polluted, you may think it is the move of the spirit. If it is void of the fruit of the spirit, it is not the move of the spirit. It is everything but. What is the fruit of the spirit? Love. The first thing he mentions is love. The first thing he mentions is love. Love out of a pure heart, a good conscience and a sincere faith. Then there's joy, there's peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Listen, when I when I when I began to understand what's going on, that those under you would bear a certain kind of resemblance. I became more careful those that I accept. I have to expressly hear from God. I don't want to accept somebody who will not be able to follow properly. And that person would, would, would carry our brand and our mark. But the, the truth is, the stream they are drinking from is polluted. The move of the Spirit never lacks the fruit of the Spirit. Can I hear somebody say that? The move of the spirit, it never lacks the fruit of the spirit. The, the move, move of the spirit, it never lacks it. It never lacks it. The evidence is there that this is the spirit of God doing this thing. Nigerians will say, who bought monkey? <laughs> I... One day I will teach about spiritual parenting, or spiritual father. Many Christians don't understand it at all. They don't get it. A question came in my wife and I Bible study. In spiritual fatherhood, is it the parent that chooses the child or is it the child that chooses the parent? And we began to debate it in ourselves. <laughs> we began to debate it. But God took me somewhere and, and showed me a scripture that revealed the truth. God plants the solitary in families. Not the child that chooses the parent, not the parent that chooses the child in spiritual fatherhood. It is God who plants the solitary in families. He's the one that say, ah, let me take Morayo and plug her in the tribe. It is God that does it. Yeah, it's God. It's God. But I digress. 
the flesh lost against the spirit the spirit lost against the flesh and these are contrary to one another they are contrary the move of the spirit is not only signified by the gifts because that's what we all look for the gifts does the person have the gift? Much more it is signified by the fruit. The flesh can lost against the spirit. The spirit can lost against the flesh. But the man that will be used by the spirit would have learned to subdue the flesh. If you don't subdue the works of the flesh, will be seen then there'll be evidence in your life adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry and people that see the gift will think it's the move of the spirit it's not hatred contentions a time came we began to see the war of prophetesses online oh my god it was it was it was shameful very shameful one person will come out and say this person is not of God. Other one will come out and it, they will say, this person too is not of God. In America, it was shameful. And and I just went to the comments and I began to see that, oh, th this was doing more harm than good to the move of the Spirit. People were asking, if you are all speaking for the same God, why are we having all this contention? Listen, oh, okay. It's okay. Let me let me let me move. Let me move. Let me move. Let me tell you the tale of two kings. Give me first Samuel 16. The tale of two kings. Eromina, can you say the tale of two kings? <laughs> let me hear Mama David say the tale of two kings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tale of two kings. These two kings, we want to see the move of the spirit in their life. You have to be very, very careful. Very careful. Man's will always competes with God's will. They hijack the move of the spirit. It becomes the move of man. Don't get the move of the spirit. Look at what it says here. So he sent and brought him in. This is now talking about David. Who sent and brought him in? It was King Saul. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. But this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And, and something happened and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward so Samuel arose and went to Ramah how I wish he stopped there but verse 14 says something very disturbing but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him and Saul's servant said to him surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. How did they come to know? How did they know? Yeah, it, it's divination. They, 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 they went to go and find out what's happening to our king, our master. Something is happening because they came and with an exactitude, they said what was wrong with the man. Read between the lines. Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp. Question for you, Madam Lola. How did they know this was the solution? They, they, they first of all found the, 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 the problem. Then they found the solution. And nobody told them. We're not told that Samuel told them what was happening. But somehow they found out. They diagnose the man then like a doctor they prescribe the medication they said let us find 
a skillful player on the harp. It wasn't the piano, it wasn't the guitar, it wasn't the drums, it wasn't the flute, it was the harp. How did they know? And it shall be that he will play it with his hand. When the distressing spirit from God is upon you, and you shall be well. This was King Saul's medication. It was the spiritual concussion. Concussion. They, 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 they found a way to know. But what was what was the, the cure? A man who is a skillful player on the harp. What they found was David, who was now carrying the Spirit of God. The current move of the Spirit was on him. But all they needed was a man that was skillful playing the harp. So Saul said to his servant, Provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. Then the servant answered and said, Look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person. And the Lord, the Lord is with him. The current move of the Spirit is with him. The move of God is on him. That's what he was saying. Look at the resume of David. Therefore Saul sends messengers to Jesse. Send me your son David who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat and sent them by his son David to Saul. So David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Then Saul sends to Jesse, saying, Please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. And so it was. The things that characterize me of the Spirit. He loved him greatly. He found favor in his sight. And so it was, whenever the Spirit from God was upon Saul, David would take a harp, and play it with his hand then Saul will become refreshed and well and the distressing spirit will depart from him listen to me if a man that plays the harp and is endowed with the move of the spirit can chase the distressing spirits away <laughs> you better believe that a man that is full on and anointed by demons and devils can bring distress in spirit. Just keep that in mind when you are playing that song in your car. I have seen a son of Jesse who is skillful in play, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person. And the Lord is with him. The current move of God is with him. The first thing you must understand is that obedience prompts the move of the Spirit. Obedience. Obedience prompts the move. Obedience. Why did the Spirit of God leave Saul? What was the reason? Anybody? Why did the Spirit of God leave Saul? Oh. It's simple, disobedience. Yeah, disobedience, disobedience. That's what it was. He disobeyed God's instructions. And, 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 and he was rejected. And then Samuel was told to anoint David as king. And we are told from when he anointed him, the Spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. What did David do different from Saul? Why did the Spirit of God leave Saul and come upon David? It's simple, obedience. Obedience. Obedience prompts the move of the Spirit. It prompts the move of the Spirit. And there are possibilities when that person begins to bring out what is inside of them. What you are seeing that he was playing the harp, it's not the harp that is being played. The real harp is his heart. 
That's what God begins to strum like a, like, a, like a guitar or something, like a harp. And then something begins to flow from you. There are possibilities when there is the move of the Spirit on a person. And that person begins to bring out what's in their heart. But obedience is the first thing that prompts the move of the Spirit. You obey God. The Bible says in the book of Acts, we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost whom God has given to those that obey him. So if you want to experience the move of the Spirit, obedience prompts that move. He begins to move, not just in you, but through you, because of obedience. So someone him, he obeyed, he came, he became his armor bearer. He began to play the harp, and, and, and the distressing spirits will be chased away. Just someone sent me a message the other day. He said, when, when, when you or your wife are teaching, I, I, I'm just so blessed. I feel refreshed. Yeah, it's obedience that does that. The Spirit of God finds a vessel and then he begins to bring out what's on the inside. You will be like David playing the harp and distressing spirits troubling people will begin to leave them. You know why? The move of the spirit on your inside cannot come out. The highway is obedience. Obedience. It's obedience. Number two, prayer. Acts 2, verse 14 to 19, the Bible says, But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Heed my words, for these people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only the third hour of the that's 9 a.m. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last day, says God. I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. We are seeing that word again, prophesy. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke listen to me prayer prayer as in the day of pentecost prayer prayer united prayer ushers in a, a a global move of the spirit a corporate move of the spirit united prayer Pray. Number three, praise. Act 16, 25, 28. Act 16, 25 to 28. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and they sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. That's the key word you should keep in mind. They sang praises to God, and the prisoners heard them. The prisoners were listening to them, New King James says. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Everyone's chains were loosed. Everyone's chains, not Paul and Silas' chains were loosed. Everyone's chains were loosed. Those that were listening to them, their chains were loosed. There was something it was doing to them. The spirit too was moving on them and in them. How often do people hear you praising God? Oh, when Amy and I praise, and we do it at, at all times of the night, we are not mindful of the neighbors hearing us. We will we, we make the music loud enough to not wake up the kids, but for it to still permeate the environment. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the key word. The prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. 
and the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep and seeing the prison doors open supposing the prisoners had fled drew his sword and was about to kill himself but Paul called with a loud voice saying do yourself no harm we are all here we are all here praise ushers in the move of the spirit it prompts it prompts the move of the spirit it prompts the move of the spirit God inhabits the praises of his people the Bible says a great earthquake a great earthquake that shook foundations in case you are looking to shake the foundation of your life the foundation of your of your family the foundation of your business there is something that you must learn to do it's called praise praise prompts the move of the spirit and what you are carrying inside can affect the outside and shake the foundation it's praise you are wasting your time complaining to people going from one door to the other complain about your life and how your money is stuck somewhere if you begin to praise and complain less you would find oh you would find something powerful that will come out of you praise praise number four Luke 1 26 to 28 the fourth thing that prompts the move of the spirit is the fulfillment of prophecy the fulfillment of prophecy Luke 1 the Bible says in that scripture now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph the house of David the virgin's name was Mary and having come in the angel said to her rejoice highly favored one the Lord is with you blessed are you amongst women the fulfillment of prophecy perhaps you are that child like Mama David was <laughs> when she came to the tribes conference in Abuja and the evangelist prophesied to her with the baby that was in her womb that said this boy will be a David you know what was funny is that when she asked me to pick a name for her son I, I the name David came to my mind and I forgot that the evangelist had called that baby David I, I honestly God is my I did not even remember that boy is destined to have a program in God to carry the move of the Spirit for his generation so a time will come when you will be of eight perhaps 21 perhaps 30 that there will be a steering just like the angel Gabriel visited Mary you begin to receive angelic ministration the fulfillment of prophecy but what happens when the spirit moves John 16 verse 13 I want to wrap up in about 15 minutes max John 16 verse 13 what begins to happen when the spirit of God moves what begins to happen the God is saying however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak he will tell you things to come he will glorify me for he will take up what is mine and declare it to you all things that the father has are mine therefore I said that he will take up mine and declare it to you Whatever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. He will glorify me. The first thing that happens when there is an authentic move of the Spirit of God is that Jesus Christ is glorified. Christ is glorified. If you, if you, if you go to a particular meeting, you don't perceive that Christ is being glorified there. You have a right to question if it is the move of the Spirit. If what you see is the glorification of man and not Christ, you have every right to question. I don't want to go into this. Unless the Spirit of God moves me, of course. <laughs> there are many ways that we see man glorifying themselves, men glorifying themselves. Let me not, let me not touch that subject. The key thing is Jesus Christ has to be glorified. 
If it is men glorifying themselves, you are in the wrong place. Number two is that when there is the move of the Spirit, there is widespread repentance and conviction in the hearts of men. Widespread repentance. There will be a conviction. There will be a conviction. There will be a, listen, if it is the Spirit of God being poured out, men will be convicted of their sin, of their crimes in the courts of heaven. Men will be convicted. They will, they will make decisions to follow Jesus, not just by his son, but by their lifestyle change. If they used to jump in bed with their boyfriends, they will stop doing that because there will be a conviction in their hearts. There will be widespread repentance and conviction in the hearts of men when there is the move of the Spirit. Number three, the sick will be healed. Can somebody say that? The sick will be healed. Can I hear somebody say that? The sick will be healed. They will become healed. healed. Yeah, it's a signature of the move of the Spirit. The sick will be healed. And it can be in different areas. It can be in the labor of the physical body. It can be in the soul. There will be healing. Listen, this is how, you know, this is the authentic move. Like Nigerians will say, authentic. <laughs> the authentic move of the Spirit of God. The sick will be healed. They will be healed. If you came here with anxiety, that burden will lift. It will lift. If you came there depressed, it will lift. Perhaps your eye is aching you, it will, it will, it will lift. Something will be better off. Something will be better off when there is an authentic move of the Spirit of God in our midst. You know why? The power of God flows in the direction of the will of God. And the will of God is what prompts the move of the Spirit to be, to be able to be widespread, to be able to do it, do what He wants to do. It's the will of God. Men conform to His will. If men don't conform to His will, they will strangle the move of God. If they strangle the move of God, there will be no power supply. There will be no power. There's something that the Apostle Paul said, and I, I thought I wrote it down. I, I, don't, I didn't write it down. According to the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, there is something called the supply of the Spirit. When the Spirit is supplied sufficiently enough, possibilities begin to open up. You see, now that I'm speaking, the Spirit is being supplied. There is a supply of the Spirit. Some may feel a, a, a denser presence around them. Some may feel a calmness around them. Some may feel sensations, pulses going through their body around them. It's significant of the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. When there is the supply of the Spirit, signs and wonders open up. The ministry of signs. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. And we always thought that he, he meant the, the signs are in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. No, they are all separate. If we had tongues, I would have shown it to you. Each one has a semicolon after it, which means that they stand alone. So there are many signs. The ministry of signs will open up. Somebody was, 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 was texting me yesterday and she said when she when she begins to pray now she feels somebody is pressing her lips <laughs> there's a tingling on her lips and a tingling on her feet and she doesn't understand what's going on i say listen just continue doing it continue praying the ministry of signs is opening up number five revelation knowledge is increased in the body when there is the move of the Spirit, there would always be revelation knowledge. You cannot have the move without revelation knowledge. Hidden dimensions in the body of Christ are made known because men that have 
walk that pathway can bring you into them. Here they come. You can give what you have because the things are revealed. They belong to us and our children. They belong to us and our children. So revelation knowledge is increased. You would, you, your heart will burn with fire because the words of God, the true words, the undiluted words of God will be spoken. And people will begin to see that they have been kept in darkness for far too long. That huge cathedral may not be giving you the authentic word of God. But when there is the move of the Spirit, you will be hearing the undiluted word of God. Revelation knowledge. And it won't just be through a man. It can come to you in dreams personally as well. It can come to you as a trance, as a vision. Knowledge can come. Knowledge will increase. The knowledge of the glory of God will be increased in that place, in that person's life. Number six, men will begin to arise. These men are called revivalists. Can I hear somebody say that? These men are called revivalists. Let me hear somebody say that. This men called revivalists men are called you find men gathered in a place in unity oh you will start seeing different expressions of graces spring forth from their lives they will be they will be the ones bringing and ushering in a revival in the body and and you can see them in different dimensions they will operate strange dimensions, strange dimensions, strange dimensions. You won't understand that, so we are missing so much in church. You'll be like, wow, yeah, because men will begin to rise. And because these men have aligned with the way of holiness and walking with God through sanctification, he will bring them into different pathways in the spirit. These men are called revivalists. But God warned me. He said, don't, don't think it is the person carrying the crowd. No, no, no. As a matter of time, a, a, a time came when God just told me, don't listen to any big preacher. Listen to the ones that are just coming up. Yeah. People like you just coming up. Just listen to them. I want you to spend time giving them audience, not just the big ones, because you can miss the move of the spirit going for the big names. You have to ask God, who are you moving with? Who are you moving on? These men are called revivals. Number seven, the demon possessed becomes set free. They become set free. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 28, if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived amongst you. That means this, the move of the spirit is now here. If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the move of the Spirit has arrived. Demons will become, demon will become set free. I was ministering in Boston and I just stretched my hands to pray. A woman began to manifest. I was not even praying in that direction. I just prayed generally, pray, general prayer. It began to manifest instantly. You know why? When there is the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, oh, demon possessed become set free. They become set free. And I went to one, I began to say, that thing that you come out of your mouth, and it came out of a mouth, right there in the service. That's because demon possessed will be set free. If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived amongst you. Listen, if you, if you have the Spirit to a measure, you don't have to go and pray for people in the deliverance service. Just you praying, generally speaking, you will see demons manifest. You will see, I've, I've seen that. Just general prayer. Number eight. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are stirred up. When there is the move of the Spirit of God, the gifts are stirred up. The gifts are stirred up. He begins to distribute gifts. Oh, you see now, impartations have opened. 
I mentioned gifts. God is now beginning to give men gifts. That's the move of the Spirit. I didn't even intend to do that, but the wind goes where it wishes. So now, people are receiving spiritual gifts in their heart. I'm seeing a person receiving the gift of tongue interpretation. I'm seeing that in the Spirit already. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit because there is a move of the Holy Spirit here. Here and now. There's somebody else, your, your, your palm will start burning. An impartation of the gift of healing will be on you. Just from being in this meeting. We're not praying, we're just speaking. Because there is the move of the Spirit. Gifts can be steered. Oh, I'm seeing somebody else. The gift of prophecy is just resting on you right now. Right now. I see a dove resting on your head. And the Spirit of God says the, the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. That's what happens when there is the move of the Spirit. It begins to dribble gifts. But, but don't forget, we don't look at gifts only. What else do we look at, guys, besides the gifts? What else do we look at? Anybody on team? Yes, sir. I'm sorry? The fruits. The fruit. The fruit. We have, listen, we have seen too many prophetesses that don't carry the fruit of the Spirit. I'm sorry. I have to be blunt. The fruit is lacking, but the gift is there. It is true that when there is the move of the Spirit, the gift, the gift of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit rests. But the gift without the fruit, it, it won't last. It won't last. It won't last. To dry up. To dry up. To dry up. Number 10. Or number nine, rather, the thirst for fellowship and holiness is increased. Men will want to just, 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 just want to just be, be in God's presence. There will be a longing. It, it will be as if He's calling you. Yeah, yeah. It is the move of the Spirit that does that. In fact, at one point, I got to my office. I want to work. I will just be overwhelmed by the Spirit of God. I'll be overwhelmed. I, it became so bad, I had to call Apostle Laramie, like, what's going on with my life? I can't work, I can't do anything. All I can do is pray. The Spirit of God just overwhelms me. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful Monday. I'm about to sit down and start making money. But then he overwhelms me. There will be a thirst for fellowship. There will be a thirst for holiness. A willful thirst to just begin to live a holy lifestyle yeah number 10 the presence of god becomes intensified in the atmosphere can somebody say that the presence of god becomes intensified in the atmosphere can i hear somebody say that listen to me Nobody can fake presence. If you like, put 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 cloud, put smoke in your church so that when you know we've seen all kinds of things, like how they put smoke in weddings these days. Some do that in there; they will put smoke. <laughs> Let me not talk. The presence of God can't be fake. If it is the the true move of the spirit of god we would we would experience the presence and it will be experienced in different ways in different ways show you that you can't fake it no man can invent it sometimes you just begin to smell beautiful smells sometimes you just feel so loved you just feel the atmosphere change around you listen the move of the spirit is beautiful beautiful The last one I'll give you, new sounds from and songs begin to come from heaven when there is the need of the Spirit. New sounds and songs begin to come from heaven. You begin to see worshippers arrive like Theophilus and 
it's significant that God is about to bring a revival because God does not do a thing without sound he doesn't yeah you begin to see that a, a new sound that is unique and ministers to your soul and your spirit to begin to be released and it can be through you you can receive songs in dreams in visions it doesn't matter it's significant that the move of the spirit is present first corinthians 12 11 my last my last scripture first corinthians 12 verse 11 give me that scripture the bible says but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills yeah I was referring to the gifts. One and the same Spirit does all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. As He wills. And if you this your smile there, eh? it's very loaded. <laughs> very, very loaded. Guys, can we in one minute begin to cry out and say, Lord, distribute to me as you will distributes to me as i see the gifts opening up more can you begin to cry out and say to god distributes to me as you will make a difference in my life distribute a gift distribute a gift to me as you will i'm thirsty i'm hungry for you for your move distributes to me as you will Amen. I'm Amen. way out of time. I'm just going to pray for us. Father, thank you because your move is here. It is here in our midst. It is here to stay. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Give us the grace to align our will with your will. Just as a wife will align her will with her husband's, so they can become one flesh indeed. Give us the wisdom to align our will with your will so that we can operate as one spirit. I see a key in the spirit. There's somebody receiving the keys to knowledge. You hear you, you'll be granted access to the realm of knowledge. This person I talk about, you've been testing and asking for this thing. Revelation knowledge, access to it. True revelation knowledge. That virtue is flowing already. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. As somebody I'm seeing in the spirits, the Lord has circumcised your heart in the last few days. Now, you will be able to perceive the move of the Spirit. When he moves within you, you'll be able to flow freely in the prophetic. You would know there will be perceptive powers, intuitive powers given to you. That virtue is flowing right now. You would know. You would know. You would know. But I'm not I see you in the spirit. That grace is flowing towards you, flowing towards you. I see you in the spirit. The grace for intuitive knowledge. Acceptive knowledge. You will operate in real time, the Spirit of God says to you. As you speak to people, you will receive downloads from them, about them. 
you would speak to them that will confirm your sayings what you are receiving I see that horn growing strong on you hmm. to somebody else you you are coming into the power of unity the power of unity unity Unity. There's somebody on here, you need deliverance. And as I speak, the Spirit of God will minister unto you. I see a demon that has been buffeting you for quite a while. There will be a reaction on you. There will be a reaction. Hmm. What I'm seeing now is a strange case. This looks like bed wetting. Somebody had that experience this week. And the Spirit of God wants to minister to you. Lord Jesus, would you would you let your spirits move in that direction, wherever it is? Oh, I feel so much virtue flowing out of my hands. So much, so much virtue leaving me. Somebody else, the gift the working of miracles you are being introduced to it the gift of the working of miracles the sign that will signify this is that your right hand will become very heavy when you pray very heavy very very heavy but Jesus Christ says to tell you it is to the end goal that I'm glorified in my life in your life that Jesus Christ is glorified. There's a veil being taken up of someone. You've been walking with this veil for a long time. This veil on it, I see the words deception written on it. God is taking that veil off your face so that you can know him truthfully. He says to tell you, you will no longer seek a man or a woman to know me. I'm ready to reveal myself to you if you will give yourself to me. Has somebody been brought into open visions? That grace is leaving me. Open visions. Somebody else closed visions. Become clear. That impartation will happen within the next seven days. Father, I thank you for these, your people. Let your move rest on them. For those who have given themselves to the walk of holiness, let grace be released in that direction. Those who are single and want to remain holy, let the grace of God rest on them. Those who are married and want to remain holy, let the grace of God rest on them. To live a, a life full of your grace. There's so much virtue flow. So much virtue flow. So much virtue flow. Thank you, Father. Somebody, the Spirit of God says to tell you, you've stepped into your season of marriage. If you will praise me for the next seven days at midnight, you will see the working of my power. If you will praise me for the next seven days at midnight, I'm seeing a um, like jewelry on a woman's neck. 
this is a grace being given. I don't see this often. This is quite interesting. It's a red jewelry. Ah, it's, it's hard to explain. It's like a necklace being worn on the person. Red. The, the, the diamond in the middle is red. The Spirit of God says is bringing you to a level as a kingdom financier where the ornaments that he's placed on you will speak on your behalf. Thank you, Father. Now, what's open now is the presence of God, the sweet smells, sweet smells, sweet smells. I can already smell them. Sweet smells. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. 